So what I want to do today is review my collection, the collection of the English watch. So they're all here in their various storage boxes um, and take you through why they're in my collection. Now each individual piece uh, you will have seen potentially uh, reviews of and all of those ones I'll leave uh, little links uh, for you to go and follow. Uh, some I've made more than one of. Uh, I'm sure you know which ones they are. Now there's one or two where I haven't made a review yet. Uh, and what I plan to do is sort of weed those out and do a proper review, so tick it out of the box and my thoughts. And the, I guess the good thing about that is not only do you get the unboxing, you also get my impression having owned the watch for a number of years, which is pretty important because there's so many times we will look at a review and it's a quick on the wrist, you know, mm -mm -mm, do I like it or not? And these things, I think they take a while to get under your skin. They need to have that instant wow factor. They need to tug at the heartstrings, but um, yeah, I think sometimes they're slow burners, uh, and I found that with a few of mine. Anyway, let's jump into it. I'm Andy, and welcome to the English Watch. So this channel is about me and my watch collecting journey. An amateur enthusiast with an eye for detail, always going behind the watch to find the story and helping like-minded individuals like you start your watch collecting journey. Now if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Please leave any comments at the end, I'll be really interested to understand what your thoughts are on my collection and where your advice would be uh, going forwards. So what we're going to do is we're going to run through my collection, give you a little bit of an understanding of why they exist in my collection and give you a little bit of a, a feeling of where my head's at in terms of um, whether I like them or not at the moment. And then give you a good impression of where the trajectory is going and what the next potential watch or watches could be. So maybe a short and medium term view of life and then whether any of these ones are at risk of being traded in. So the first watch is the watch I'm wearing and it's my Apple Watch. So this is the Series 4. Uh, I've had it, I don't know, three or four years, however long the, the 4 has been out. Uh, it's 44mm. It's the Nike version. It comes on this sort of silicon rubbery strap which is quite nice. Um, I tend to wear it for cycling, going to the gym, washing the car, decorating, which I don't do very often. Um, and when I'm working at my desk so I don't bash the uh, the clasp or bracelet up on the keyboard. So I don't wear this every day. Uh, it, it, it does my head in the fact that it tells me to stand up, tells me to breathe. Um, my phone will ring and then it won't make a noise but this will start buzzing on my wrist so I can't cope with that. So this has very specific uses, uh, call it a bead to watch or whatever. Um, but I've really yeah, beaten it to death uh, and it's, it's stood the test of time. So. I've got a lot of time for the Apple Watch, but not as an everyday for me. Okay, let's put that one down. Well, the next one is one of my early watches from the channel, not necessarily in the collection, and this is a Swatch watch. Now, hopefully you'll, you'll have looked back in my catalogue and seen me uh, right at the start of lockdown, dressing up, doing a bit of role play uh, as James Bond, because uh, this is the Swatch Q watch. Now, Swatch and Omega tried launching watches when No Time to Die, the most recent James Bond film, was going to be um, launched back in, I think it was April 2020. So co to commemorate that, they had a whole James Bond range that were out at the time, but they launched some uh, special ones for the movie as well. Obviously the Diver 300, which is yeah, like seven grand or so. But then there was this one here, which was the Q watch. And this is the watch that um, Q, played by Ben Whishaw, wore in the movie. Yeah, who we finally got to see um, a few months ago. Now, this one, I'll take it out of the box, is still for sale. Um, but it's just kind of a Mark II. So the one I have is the original, which has the red accents on the dial. The new one has blue hands and blue accenting to the oscillator, I think. And it also doesn't have this pale tan strap either. It has the, the red edging, uh, but I think the red extends around the back. So this is the original. I've not worn it since I did the review. Um, when was that? It would have been like April? 2020 yeah wow that was a long time ago and yeah one of the early videos from the channel so I'll keep it in the box uh, it's one of those things that 
Um, it's, it's never going to make me a millionaire, is it? But um, it's a bit of collectible nonsense that, you know, why wouldn't you? I'll probably take the battery out to stop it going nasty, but yeah, swatch, watch. In fact, let's put that one on the desk. Put the box down here, out of the way. Right, so the next one is in my Wolf Winder. So I did a review on the Wolf Winder last summer. It's been pretty good. I tend to keep a watch in there. Um, yeah, if I want to just grab one on the go. So we'll just, just get rid of Concord. Um, and this mug, which a few people have asked about merchandise, and it's not something I've really considered that much because you have to buy so many other things, and I don't want to end up with a garage full of mugs um, for one or two people. So maybe one day. Uh, there are other avenues that I can explore, but um, yeah, let's get that out of the way. Now, the watches that I store in the top of here are, let's call them budget, uh, other novelties similar to the swatch, but ones that I may one day wear. So this winder has a little bit of a lid. And the first one in here, it holds three watches, it's pretty good. So check out the review, I'll leave little links to the reviews um, as we go through. So this one is is the Jaguar watch. This is the watch that um, my old company, clues in the name, uh, gave me when I left after 20 years service um, earlier in the year. Now I've never worn it, um, it's a massive old thing. It's a quartz watch. Um, yeah, they do lots of boutique editions. Uh, yeah, other car brands do them as well. It's not too bad, you know, it's not terrible, is it? But it's it's a real weapon. Oh, I've just not felt the, um, I'll put it on my wrist now, and actually it's not too bad. This strap is quite comfortable. You know, Value-wise, it's it's not there, but obviously sentimentally, it's, 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 it was given to me by people that, that I care about, so I'll never get rid of it. But actually it's not too bad. It's big, but maybe I'll give it a bash. Maybe I'll wear it to work. Let's see. I do like leather straps at the moment. I tend to take my uh, metal braces off and put them on leather, so this one has come on a leather. And the strap is quite nice, it's quite soft. Um, hmm, interesting. Anyway, Jaguar watch. Right, the next one is a recent one. This is the Seagull 1963 Pilot Chronograph. Now this is a watch that I didn't buy, it was sent to me by AliExpress to review, which I've done. Um, so check that out. And I've been timing this one for a week, I've not been wearing it, but every every morning I wind it up and I'll, I'll use the watch um, tracker uh, to, to check the time. And it's plus or minus two seconds a day. So is this a fake 1963? Maybe, it's a copy, but... I think anything goes in China at the moment, so how they've made you know, the movement so accurate, I don't know, but it's pretty good. So that manual wine chronograph movement, pretty special, yeah, accuracy-wise. So don't know how long that will last, we'll keep keep trying it. But it's an interesting one to, what, to wear. Now, I do wear it now and again, uh, not too often because I'm not a massive fan of NATO straps. Uh, I don't like the little bit that sticks out at the end. But, um, and again, the strap's a little bit too short, so I can't really tuck this bit in, so it's quite annoying. Um, but anyway, it's, I say it's interesting. It's not like anything I have in my collection. It's not one I'll ever get rid of. Maybe I'll do it as a giveaway, or maybe I'll just give it to my son. He did like it, actually. All right. So the last one in the wall finder, this does take three, there's one more slot, so room for uh, another novelty watch maybe uh, on my travels. Maybe there's a, another swatch that's uh, itching to be bought from a hotel, not a hotel, from an airport. Right, so this one here, which is on the, uh, the squashy cushion that, that sits in the winder. This is the Tissot Gentleman. Now this is the most recent uh, purchase, 
So I bought this one from Goldsmiths Online. Got a discount code. I think I paid just over 500 quid for it. So the automatic winding. Uh, there is a quartz version. I bought this one instead of the PRX, which um, I didn't really like on the wrist. I know it's an interesting watch, but I just really like the green dial, and I don't have a green dial watch. And I think for something to wear to the pub, something that you're not going to be devastated about if if it gets lost um, or you bash it up on it in a drunken stupor coming home. It's okay. Uh, I would highly recommend this one. Um, and for 500 quid to get you know, this automatic ETA based um, caliber, which I think Swatch put in a lot of their brands now, like Hamilton, Mido, Longines. Uh, it's pretty damn accurate as well. Again, timing this one well within cost. Um, it sits in the winder, and I think over the well, what's the time now? Let's use the uh, yeah, it sits within five seconds of when I set it a month ago. So that's pretty good, isn't it? The only difference is I've not reset it for um, GMT because obviously we've gone through uh, the changing of the clocks. So I've not done that yet. Right, where do we go next? Let's go into the little red box here. So this is a service pouch. This is what um, my son's Aquaterra came back in. Uh, it's changed from the original sort of, sort of torpedo tube type uh, boxes from Amiga. And in here we have, oh, I didn't. I thought this was something else. <laughs> this goes to show I've not really looked for a while. Uh, it's got my, uh, it's got my Speedy. Now, what I've been doing, as I said, is putting these back on their bracelets. So, oh, that's a bit grubby. Let's get a uh, rub it on my shirt. I thought I had a cloth here. So this is my uh, Speedmaster Professional. I bought this one in 2018 uh, after a trip to sunny Florida. We went to Cape Canaveral and that kind of fired the child in me if you like. Um, I've been a space nut for yeah, since I was a kid but the whole watch scene was was quite alien to me. I was more about the the spacecraft, the astronauts, the, you know, the whole you know, experience about it, not necessarily about the you know, this little thing on his wrist and maybe um, I knew sub, subliminally but it wasn't until I was in my um, local goldsmiths when I was having my old Seamaster service the guy used to take me over to the counter all the time and show me you know, the watches they had and we'd talk about the, the Speedmaster and the letters from the archives that, that he said that they, they had. Uh, and I always found that interesting and you know, when the time came, sure enough, a Speedmaster was definitely on the, uh, on the list. Now I tend to wear this one on um, a leather strap. The, bracelet I have to wear it a little bit loose because there has because there's no uh, on the fly adjustment and this is the more modern uh, sort of non tapering bracelet which they changed um, I guess around 2013 I'm gonna say when they did the 50th anniversary uh, with the big box uh, I may be wrong on that but um, yeah, the, 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 when this one changed in 1997 with the 1863 movement, it had a tapering bracelet with a uh, friction clasp. Uh, but this one, this chunkier version, came in in the 2000s. Now it's gone back now, obviously, to the more tapered, daintier bracelet. And I have thought, yeah, should I trade this one in? But nah, I don't wear it on the bracelet normally, so why would I? Um, and besides, this one's got this one does have sentimental value. I think a Speedmaster can sit quite nicely in anyone's collection because value-wise, I mean, I paid, what, just under £3,000 for this one. I uh, got a pretty good discount. I mean, those discounts aren't there anymore, but for the Hesslite version, which is around five grand, um, you could buy that. Or you could still pick one of these up for, for around four, I think. Um, so there's no real wrong answer because you know, the legacy is so enduring. And this, you, know, you can pay a lot for the special editions, but I think the the best one is the original, yeah, you know, the Hesselite. It's the most honest one. If you've got the money, by all means, go for the special editions. But I think the best value is obviously it, the Hesselite version because of its uh, authenticity. 
Right, we're now into the um, last strokes and in here, this is the Mirage watch roll, which again I've done a review on, so go check that one out. And this watch roll I think is, is a really good uh, Christmas present, so it's that time of year, for, for under 100 quid, yeah, this thing is pretty smoking in terms of the quality of the finish, uh, how it feels, it's really supple, over time it's sort of loosened up, it's got nice poppers and let's have a quick look inside and choose which one we're going to go for. Oh, look, there's my cloth, could have done with that a minute ago. So what we have in here are three sport stunners as uh, Archie would say and what we're going to do is start with the Tudor Black Bay. So these cushions, they have these little little runners on them so yeah, the watches don't move around in the uh, in the box, uh, so that's pretty good. And a nice soft, soft little suede cushions as well. Right, so this is the Tudor GMT, which I bought new in 2019. Uh, this was for the original retail price, which I think was about 2,850. So launched in 2018 at Baselworld, along with the uh, revised uh, steel Rolex Pepsi GMT. So this one I've probably talked about quite a bit in terms of love, hate, love, hate. Uh, I've been wearing it on the bracelet recently and it's been okay. Sometimes I put it on, it feels heavy, um, but then I think a lot of my stainless steel watches do. Putting the Speedy on just there, it just felt a little bit weighty. And I think that's because I've been wearing them on leather so much. So as I said, sometimes you just got to sort of re-baseline your, your, your feelings and um, just give it another go. So I do like this watch. Uh, I think it's really interesting. I think the dial uh, with the black, not the black, I think the dial with the red and the dark blue is great. Uh, it's a great travel watch. Uh, again, it's not so expensive. If I did want to move on, they're available. You can go and buy one tomorrow. Um, so I wouldn't be too good. If I had to move it on, if I needed the money, then it, A, it'd be relatively straightforward to move it on. I think, yeah, I probably would have lost. I don't know, if I sold it tomorrow um, into a dealer, I might get late uh, 1,000, so maybe 1,800 quid, 1,900 quid. If I sold it on eBay, um, I might get two and a half, two, four. Yeah, that's, that's about where they're selling at the moment. So to lose, uh, if I sold it privately, plus fees, about 500 quid over a couple of years. It's not a big deal, is it really, um, to get the capital back? So we talk about value retention and you know, whether watches are assets or, or investments. They're definitely assets because they do have retained value, but investment-wise, not really, no. Maybe there's one in my collection that has risen in value and I guess it'll push the speedy maybe worth more than three in the condition it's in but not a great deal so your money is better spent elsewhere if you want true investments in my view right the next one is it's just the next one in the sequence it's the Rolex Submariner so a watch that um, I had when did I buy this one I picked this one up in, I'm going to say January 2020, just before the proverbial hit the fan uh, in the global economy. And I'd probably waited about nine months to, to get this one. But this is the pre current edition, so the 116610LN. So it's not the latest 41mm, this is the old 40mm with the old movement. Um, but I have tried the new one. And yes, it's got a better movement with more power reserve, but that doesn't really mean a great deal to me. I think you know, when I wear my watches in rotation, I wear them every day, so having slightly more power reserve isn't a deal breaker. What was is the clasp, I think, on this one. This has got the old slimmer clasp. Um, the newer one is a bit, it's only like a millimetre thicker, but I think it's noticeable. And with Rolex have this distinctive tapering, yeah, from the lugs down to the clasp that I do like and it's unusual in terms of my other watches so it gives it something more unique. Now this watch I don't wear as often as maybe I should. Um, I do like wearing it. I do feel pretty special when I do wear it. Um, 
people don't notice these things. It's, I'm only doing it for me. But it has um, it has gained value. Um, and I paid seven. What did I pay for it? Seven one fifty. I think the list was. And I think if I was going to sell this one again, sell it myself uh, on eBay or Chrono Twenty Four, maybe I'll get nine nine and a half. Um, if you went to a dealer, you'd pay ten, ten and a half maybe. Uh, I don't know how long those those values will sustain there. But yeah, I've probably made a couple of grand on this one. Again, not mega, um, not life changing subs of money. But again, if I wanted to move it on, if I need the money, this one is yeah, yeah, I could get out of it pretty quickly and get all my money back. Um, and yes, yeah, worst case, I do get all my money back. It's not like I'm going to take a hit. And then finally, finally, the last watch in the box is, oh, I forgot how heavy this bloody thing is, <laughs> it's, it's my uh, Planet Ocean. So this is the 43.5mm Planet Ocean. Many a video has been made about the trials and tribulations of, of this watch um, through the early phase of my YouTube career uh, when it um, decided to take on water, left the hatch open or who knows what. Um, I don't even go, I didn't submerge it. it was, I, was, I was trying to do a, an unboxing and some arty shots with water and I don't know, water got in. They fixed it under warranty. Um, it had a bit of a problem with the um, setting lever or something, so when I wound it, it didn't it didn't wind the hour hand. But otherwise, since it came back uh, in I'm going to say July last year, so July 2020, so that's well over a year. This hasn't missed a beat. I've wore I wore it all through last summer, this summer on the rubber strap, which I have here. This is my. Genuine Omega rubber strap that I tend to wear it on. This thing's great. Really transforms the watch. But a watch that probably started my contemporary collection um, because it's now my oldest luxury watch. In fact, it's uh, that's my oldest watch, this one. So I bought this one in May 2018. And once I'd had this one and then bought the Speedmaster, my Seamaster 120 didn't stand a chance. So that one went. Um, I thought, I've had it for, I don't know, 18 years. I think I sold it last year, 18 months ago. Had my wear out of it. I didn't put it on the wrist for yeah, nearly two years. And I thought, there's no point keeping it. Um, a little sad, maybe, but not many regrets i think i think it was the right thing to do and as i go through thinking about what i've got now and where i want to go it could be it could be that this one is the next to go um again it's a watch that if i sold it tomorrow um and then change my mind i can go and buy it again for similar money I bought this one for what did I buy it for? About four two four one um, again in 2018. So got some discount. I think the, the retail at the time was about four seven four eight. Um, so didn't get a massive discount, but it was at the time I thought, yeah, great, got 10 percent off. Um, these are retailing for over five grand now. So I think you know, I think because of the the age of the range, you probably they, you probably still get some discount. Um, but um, if I wanted to sell this one privately, maybe I'll get late threes, maybe three eight. Trading in, I'm not asked, but I can't imagine they'll give me much more than three, uh, to be honest. So I think as a private sale, again, as with the Tudor, what have I lost? Maybe 500 quid, 600 pounds tops, um, and I'll get some money for the strap and the clasp as well. So not a massive drop. Not a massive drop, you yeah, know, just the value of of this one. Yeah, that, that TSO, the, that's the value that maybe I lost out of this one. But yeah, I think this one could be the next one out the door. Um, we'll see, because when we think about what have I got? 
if I park the uh, planet ocean for a minute, we have a chronograph. We have a dive watch. We have a GMT. So we've got three of the staples covered with those. I've got some other stuff here as well. I've got, yeah, call it a, a date um, dress, half dress sports watch. Yeah, non functioning. Yeah, it's not a diver, it's not a chronograph, um, it's not a GMT, it's, it's a regular three hander, call it that. But what don't I have? What I don't have is, other than the Speedy, I don't have a three hand no date watch. I don't have a pilot's watch per se, the GMT you could argue is. So maybe my thoughts at the moment are um, I like the Black Bay Ceramic. Again, three hand and no date. Um, that one's about three and a half grand, not bad. I like the new Seamaster 300, so the Heritage line. Um, the one with the lollipop uh, seconds hand. But I do like that bronze gold, although it's quite expensive. And I do like the IWC Big Pilot, the 43. I've tried that one a few times, and I like it a lot. Again, it's a three hand no date. Blue dial, so light for light, blue dial in, blue dial out. But that one is about seven or so, isn't it? With the on the bracelet. I'll buy it on the bracelet and then get them to throw a strap in. So that one for me, if I wind back six weeks, that's definitely gonna be my next watch. But then I think I need a dress watch. I'm at that point in my life where I think I could rock a dress watch quite nicely and although I had one in the 120, the Seamaster 120, I think something like a JLC Master Ultra Thin Moon Phase, again which I've talked about before. I did look, look at the calendar, the Master calendar, and I like it but I don't think that's where my heart is at the moment. I kind of like the Rose Gold Ultra Thin Moon Phase which it's very expensive. I think it's about 17 grand. I can't afford that. So what I want to do is just keep saving. See if my crypto goes up any, you know, that's, there's not a lot in there, but we'll give it a go. Um, I think the values of these will steady. Um, I'm not going to, they're not going to drop much more. I think they've lost their value now. So I've got plenty of time to worry about the next one. I've got loads of nice watches to wear, which is quite lucky. So I'm holding steady. So the trajectory is definitely there and the desire is there. Uh, I'm really enjoying learning, really enjoying trying out the watches, going kicking tires, uh, getting under the skin. Um, it's difficult to get rid of them though, isn't it? Anyway, let me know your thoughts. Let me know your thoughts about my collection. Look out for a full review and unboxing of the planet ocean which has been long long overdue um, and yeah th nearly four years on the wrist yeah yeah anyway i'm andy this has been the english watch take care and i'll see you soon bye for now